Mindfulness Project family. Um, I'm super happy today. Um, we, we have a very, very special guest and we tried for many times to make this happen. So um, this is Thomas, a dear friend of ours. Um, he is a priest um, in Germany and um, he also took, I think it was three years ago, um, yeah. that you took a, day, um, a year off and you went to India um, to different ashrams and also um, different monasteries and then afterwards we had the honor to have you in our meditation retreats and um, then afterwards um, a little bit of time together and um, we also have been to your sermons in, um, in your church um, two times already when we were in Germany and I'm a very, very big fan of your <laughs> teachings. And um, I'm, I'm very happy because in this advanced calendar, um, we are trying to bring the different streams of spirituality together um, to, to make it visible that it's actually all have the same source. That we're all talking about um, the same um, things. And yeah. Thomas, thank you so much for being here. Um, this week teaching um, is all about compassion. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to know you are you are working in church, you have, um, you know, you are you are caring um, so beautiful for so many people. So what from your traditional background, what what does um, compassion mean to you in person? Yeah, dear Christian, first of all, I also want to say thank you for this invitation that we have a small talk together. And I'm very grateful to spend some thoughts about this issue, compassion. What does it mean? Well, I think, first of all, when you asked me, even as a priest, I would say, or as a pastor, I'm a pastor here in Hamburg, um, I would say compassion is something which belongs to everybody, to every human being. Yeah, it is something which is not necessarily connected to any religion or to any ethical concept, but it is um, maybe you can say something like a law in our hearts. Yeah, so when we talk about compassion, we're connected. We can, yeah, we're connected somehow with the perception of our heart when we are in contact with other people, we can feel um, how we encounter each other and we can feel what is that what they are saying. I mean, communication has so many channels. Talking is something and perception is, is something. You can feel what, what is the burden of this people or what is the joy of this people? What is, what is going on in his mind? What is his problem or her problem and so on? And, and make communication whole in itself not only to hear not only to to see not only to talk but also to perceive with our hearts and i think this is a path um, or this is this is a compassion in this widest understanding of the meaning of this word and and yeah when we follow this trace of compassion I would say it leads to love. So this is in small sentence when you asked me of my uh, thoughts and thinking about um, compassion. When, I'm, when we are going on, we could say, okay, this is the theory. <laughs> and in reality, <laughs> it's often look very different from, from that. Yeah? And this is really interesting for me. Um, there's an interesting story Jesus tells about this issue. And if you agree, I would, would say this small, small story from the Bible. Um, it's a very well-known story. I think you heard about the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's in the Gospel of Luke. I can introduce you to the story in small sentences. Um, a scholar of law, of Jewish law, is coming to Jesus and he asked Jesus, teacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? 
And Jesus listened to that, what this, this scholar is talking, saying, asking him answers with a question and says, okay, what do you think? What is written in the Bible? And as Jewish people, Jesus was a Jew and the scholar was a Jew. They were talking about what we call in our Christian uh, um, understanding the Old Testament and especially the Torah, the five books of Moses. So what is, what is, and what can you read in the Bible? And the scholar answers, well, love God and love your neighbor. So it leads us to the question of love. Yeah, and Jesus says, okay, it's right. So go, do it, and you will live. But this is not the end of the, the small discussion between those two. And then the scholar asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And then Jesus started to um, say this beautiful small parable, what we know under the, uh, which, is, which is called the story of the Good Samaritan. And it's important to know about the Samar Samaritans and the Jewish people that they are not really friends to each other, rather an opposite, they were enemies. So what is Jesus doing? He's picking up a bad guy in their understanding, in the Jewish understanding, to be in fact the good guy in this story. So in small, the man, one man was walking alone through a lonely place, maybe in the desert. And then on the way to Jerusalem, and then he fell victim to robbers and was left half death, lying somewhere on the, on the way with blood on his body everywhere and half death. And two persons were passing him. The first one was a priest and the second one was a Levite, an assistant to the temple. They were holy people in their Jewish community. They passed him. And here it is important to know what the Jewish law is saying about the rules and the behavior of those priests or those holy persons within the community. You also can read it in the third book of Moses, the Leviticus, in chapter 19 to 21, where you find special rules. And one of these rules says that priests and Levites, so these temple assistants, have to maintain ritual purity. And if they get in contact with a man who is half dead, or with a dead person, or with blood, or with wounds that are bleeding, they become impurity. So they are not longer ritual pure, or they not longer, longer have that could maintain ritual purity. So this part of the story, then the, yeah, okay. Um, so Jesus, this is not written in the story. Yeah? So this, this um, legal context, the behavior, the, 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 the law, which, are, which this priest is to do, or which they are compelled to, to fulfill. This is, this is not written in the Bible, but all the, the, the persons who were standing around, the Jewish person, they know about this laws. So what is Jesus saying at this moment? You can follow the legal law, you can follow the law, or you can follow the way of love. You can follow the way of the heart. And then the Samaritan came up this way. And what is he doing? He was moved with compassion. And he goes to this man who's lying on, on, on the ground and he is taking care of him. He bandaged his wounds and he bring him on his donkey or whatever he has and brings him to an inn. And to the innkeeper, he says, okay, care for him, I'll give you some money. And if you need more money, I will come back later on and I will give it to you. So this is the other hand, yes. And I was talking about the Samaritans, which are not 
or rather enemies to the Jewish people. Jesus take this person to show what it means to follow the way of compassion and to follow the way of love and to act according to this way of love. And for me, it is very interesting in, in different points, but also in that point that each of us, I think, every one of us has his own inner measure or scale or this, its own pattern of moral values, of ethical values to behave, yeah? And you cannot say, even to this priest and to this temple assistant, the Levite, you cannot say they are bad persons, yeah? Because they have their own rules to follow. And they said, what I'm doing is right. Maybe he, they, went to the temp, they went to the temple and they prayed for this person because it's in their own concept of thinking or their own concept of, of serving the holy God, for instance. Yeah? So an understanding of the, the, how they understand society and so on and so on. And every one of us also has, has values um, which give us a way according to that we are all, which says us how do we have to behave and what we are find is right or wrong or what we are doing. And Jesus at this point said there's only one law which is important. And this is the law of love. And this is the law of compassion because compassion is that what he felt the Samaritan. And then he follows automatically that what is what, what, what is necessary to do. Yeah? He acts, he started to act. And this is the last um, or the, the following thought in this line. I think every one of us has the ability to for compassion and to feel with others. But for that, we need the time of perception to perceive. We really need to take time to perceive. But what we are normally doing is um, giving the time of perception or, or reducing the time of perception, this period of perception. Yeah? And immediately we go on to think about what we have to, must do, what we have to do. And immediately we go on to behave and to act in this old patterns we do since since a long time and so on and so on. Which somebody told us what is right to do and so on and so on. We have all concepts. But um, we, are, we do not really take time for perception. And this is the door, I would say, for compassion. Yeah? It opens for compassion. And when we take time, Maybe we come to absolutely other answers and possibilities of acting and, and finding out what now is necessary to do, what now is possible. Yeah, so on and so on. So, and, and also a last thought to that, because we, we, I, I, we, I came to you, we learned each other in 2019 during this, this retreat of, of meditation. And I won't say about that, it was a fantastic time. <laughs> Nevertheless, I think meditation in general, either it is a Buddhist tradition, either it is, it is a Christian tradition or Hinduistic tradition, whatever, a Jewish tradition, even Islamic tradition, whatever. It leads us to ourselves and we have the ability and the chance, chance to enlarge this time or this, this this quality of perception yeah and not to deal with this perception but to find out whether this is my christian background yeah so find out whether it is what what is the feeling what do i feel when i have thoughts and you we all know that when we're meditating there are a lot of thoughts coming into our mind but then we we have the chance to find out what is the feeling behind this to perceive what this thoughts will tell us and if it is painful, it is joyful, whatever we can bring it. This is my tradition. I can bring it to God. Yeah. And even I would say when there is, I bring it to God and it is a painful 
feeling, painful perception. God is the one who can heal this. So this is my view of, of this way. Yeah. And again, um, we we're talking of compassion. I think the story with this parable, this beautiful parable, Jesus is saying, or is, is, is explaining to this person, the scholar of the law, shows us the priority of love, the priority of um, following, yes, the voice of your heart, if you want to say it like that. Thank you. Thank you uh, it's so beautiful. It is so stunning because, um, you know, we were, we are talking a lot about exactly these points, you know, that in our societies, a lot of times we are, you know, on the, on the mental plane um, of, you know, we, we say it's, it's more the, the, the male side of our personality you know, the, the rational, the logic and stuff like this. And uh, a lot of times we feel like that the female part of intuition of the heart, of, you know, the, the inner truth, that yes. this is so much missing in, in our societies. Um, and I, I do feel that uh, we need to make, you know, steps towards exactly that, what you just mm -hmm. described that we you know don't act out of our fears out of our um you know conditioned behaviors mm -hmm. and learned ethics but that we all have um the same kind of ethics inside of us when we take time to listen thank you so much yeah that was beautiful um I, I would like to know because you have so much experience with working with people do you have an example which comes to your mind where compassion really made a difference in, um, in you know, what you were doing or what other people were doing, you know, because um, I find it so interesting that the church is the largest organization of um, helping doing charity work and mm -hmm. um, so there what 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 for you is is the driving energy um, to work with people for me personally um, of course i would say that compassion um, plays a big role in working with people um, yes i I do pastoral care. I work also as a therapist and I, I go together with people in, in when they we have crisis and, and so on. And for me, I would say compassion is an, as I just told you, like an opener, which enables um, to, to get in contact with each other. Um, and this can be any situation, yeah? I mean, when we're talking, when we sit together with, with people who lost somebody in the family because he died, and we're talking about the funeral, but also of the whole life and the story about this, I, I can feel that there, at one point, it, it's not, not always, the fact, but very often I can feel that there is something gets something gets open, maybe the heart, whatever, and and we we can we can talk very um, freely, very open from our heart and from our mind about that what is necessary or what is important. So, and um, yeah, I think now what, that we are talking about that. Um, that compassion really is something um, in contact, in, in encountering somebody which enables really deep encounters or deep, deep. I don't know whether my English is not that good. Sorry for that, but I hope you understand what I mean. It brings me to a very famous scholar, which he's Martin Buber. I think you heard about him. Martin Buber wrote many books about this, this, what happens when people really come together. Yeah? And he wrote a 
book, which is I and you, ich und du in German. And, and there he wrote about this, what, what, what happens when, when people encounter really from heart to heart. Yeah? This is a bigger dimension. And he also brings it into a spiritual dimension yeah? because then you can feel connected not only with this um, opposite person which you're talking with, but also with, with yeah, the universe at the, uh, yeah, at the end. <laughs> And this is, of course, the biggest step you can do, but it leads you to that. So, yeah, in that way, in short. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I experience a lot of times that people can become a little bit resistant against these concepts of love and compassion and mm -hmm. connection um, in the sense of that they feel it's the weak part of mm -hmm. our personality. Mm -hmm. And if we love too much, if we open too much, mm -hmm. then we can become a victim of other people or you know, we can um, <clears throat> take an advantage of. Um, what would be your, um, your answer to that? Yeah, it's true. And I have many respect for that. When somebody says, this is my, my limit here, Mm -hmm. uh, because I feel that I need to um, uh, schützen, beschützen, protect, protect myself. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, and on the other hand, what you can do is to um, build up a path of trust. Yeah, however it will be, but try to be very open, accept what this person is saying, and. On the other hand, when you come to this point, there is something, you can ask it also, yeah? There is something which um, brought this person to you or in this context and brought you, brought him or her to that situation that they talk, she or he talks about that, what happened to him and how he feels or she feels and, and then, yeah, you can can go together with this person. What is the um, yearning? Um, what he really wants, and what are the small steps you can do together? And I think build a path of trust, mm. however it will be. Yeah, this is um, depends on the situation, on the on the person, and and of the story, and so on and so on. But to make sure uh, to find. Yeah, to, to try to build this fundament of trust. And sometimes it takes a long time, and sometimes it's a little bit faster. And then you can see where you reach together. Yeah. yeah but, but really to accept and respect what they say for themselves. I think this is necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what, what comes to my mind um, in this moment is um, there's a saying of the Buddha which says, if you don't have an inner enemy anymore, no outer enemy can do you any harm. Mm -hmm. So that means if you are just really connected with that which goes beyond you, when there's no ego, when you're not fighting against yourself anymore, then no outer enemy can do you any harm. And um, I always find it so inspiring in, in the Bible. Um, it says, when I'm walking through the most darkest times in my life, I will be always with you. Mm -hmm. um, I have the feeling there is, a, there is a pointing towards a trust because you were talking about trust. Mm -hmm. um, which is not a trust which is defined by I trust you, the I you connection, but that there is a trust which is kind of like embodied in something bigger. Do, do you have any, any kind of feelings or, or? Yeah, this leads us to the big mystery of belief. Huh? What is belief and mm -hmm. what is this which creates trust? Or where can we, to, to which opposite we can bring our trust or we can receive trust. It's always 
the question of encountering something. This is this is the concept of of Christianity, but not only of Christianity. That that I believe. I don't believe in in an old theistic God who is an old man with beard and white hair and something like that. Yeah, <laughs> not at all. But I believe that there is something bigger than me, and which sometimes um, comes up or uh, shines out, or, or, or is, is, I can feel it when when I, yeah, even also in encountering people, then we can feel that that what happens is bigger than that what we both bring together. Yeah, so something, this is what we called Gnade, um, what is the name, Gnade? Grace, I don't know. grace yeah. Grace, mm -hmm. grace, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. What we call grace, you can't do it. Yeah, you can't do it. Just happens somehow. And the other point, um, you were talking about the inner Buddha and if you have no fear, um, to your inner Buddha, it's also a question of forgiveness. Yeah, I, I think it's very difficult. It's I only talk about my experience now. Yeah, it's, I, think, it's, I think it's very important because church always said what people had to think and to believe, and this is not my concept, not at all, but <laughs> about my experience. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For me, it was really. Uh, and, and it, it was a really, yeah, what do I say? Um, one of it's Muslim, ich gerade sortieren. And when, when I encountered things through in meditation or in, in, in times in my life where I faced things I did. I myself did, and I was in trouble with that. Yeah, I could. It was harmful for me. It was painful for me. Not even what I um, experienced, but also that what what I did somehow. Yeah, to excuse myself for that, or to forgive myself for that. It was for me. It was a, a um, salvation. Not salvation, about the right word. But in that way, it was. An, eine Erlösung irgendwie, also eine Befreiung. Um, uh, liberation, yeah. Liberation, yeah, somehow. Maybe um, it was kind of liberation from that old um, things, that there is something out of myself, an opposite of me, who told me I can, I forgive you, yeah, if you know what I mean. So there was no real existing person which told it me, but I had this perception, I had the feeling that there is something bigger and something higher and something greater, which told me, yes, it's okay. So what you are doing, yeah, and what you have done, and I forgive you for that, yeah, and that helped me to accept what I have done. Mm -hmm. and to accept what, what, what had happened in my life and so on and so on and to go ahead on um, yeah, with this trust <laughs> that there is something bigger this is my belief yeah, that I have the trust there is something which absolutely say yes to me yeah, and I can take it from me yes <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you. You have any question? No, I don't have any question. I'm just feel connected with what you said. It was very beautiful. Said I felt like um, that we can hand over also mm -hmm. things to to God, and mm -hmm. it express for me expresses for me also what is needed for compassion is connection. Mm -hmm. Like, and then this deepest connection to something what you said is bigger than me and us and all mm -hmm. of us together. And mm -hmm. that by walking on this earth that we are never alone. And mm -hmm. I think this for me is something that um, is hard to yeah. change. It's very, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, for, for me, when, when I, before I started this journey, 
I, if I would hear us talk in this way, I will be, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you know, that's, that's an illusion, you know, this is just old thinking. And until you start to make experiences, like you said, you know, like in um, when you when you have the ability to walk on the spiritual path, mm -hmm. suddenly you make experiences, you know, for it, it's, it's not that you imagine something or um, that it is just a bare feeling. It, it is a deep, deep knowing in your heart that there is something which is beyond our perception, beyond our eyes, ears, nose, tongues, and that this is something which is conscious. You know, it's not random. And, um, and like you said, it is connected with love. It is connected with compassion, with forgiveness. And I think um, it's so important that we're that we don't forget and i i love that you said it in our day-to-day -day life that we're sometimes so deep in our worries our um you know things which are um which are difficult and yeah my 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 knees just died you know 20 years in a car accident and in this moment i was just you know all all worries all other things just fell off and i was just in the moment and what happened was that i i, I had deep deep moments of gratitude mm -hmm. of appreciation of what we have and um of of awe you know of wonder about you know death and birth and life and you know everything what is there and i think um it's so important that we just really you know look and make time and space um for this kind of connection with with that which is beyond us because otherwise um i feel we 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 are losing the the where where we are supposed to go because i think you know, our in, inherent nature, like you said, compassion is something we all have inside. Love is something we all have inside. And, you know, we, 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 if we practice it, oops, <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a little blackout. But when we practice this, then something beautiful comes out of it. And this is what I feel in our connection, you know, right now. It's not about words, it's not about concepts, it's not about beliefs, colors, genders, um, sexualities, it's just something beyond which connects us. And thank you, you know, yeah. for I'm very that. grateful mm -hmm. for, yeah. for this community, really. Thank you so much, really. <laughs> That that was such such a beautiful. I think we should do that more often. Um, <laughs> so so maybe maybe we can um, we we can do that. Um, everybody who's who's um, watching and listening to this, um, if you want us to do this more often, just write. Right, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. He gets a lot of emails. Uh, and... Next time in Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Okay, that, 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 that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I hope we all have a beautiful Christmas time. Um, I hope everybody stays healthy and happy and calm and relaxed with all the pressure from different sides. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Thomas, I, I wish um, your lovely wife all the best from us. Thank you. Also, greetings from my lovely wife. Oh, she told me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And I hope we have the chance um, to, to, to meet again soon. And yeah, in, in regard of all, all people watching this now, thank you so much, Thomas, for your mm -hmm. time and your beautiful Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.